SpaceX Starlink got the biggest update ever. Have you noticed it? I have. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time. We're coming to the end of some misty morning and focus combination. That zing, that bergamot is so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of great tech. So today is going to be a SpaceX Starlink day. Massive update happened just a week, week and a half ago or something. And I have to attest to it. I did a lot of testing and it is 100% factual and it works unbelievably well. Finally, people that are in rural areas or maybe in the concrete jungle somewhere that's trying to get a clear view of the sky and it's very difficult for them, it's not that much of a problem anymore. So I want to talk to you guys about this. I was reading a couple of articles. I put them together. I want to read some of this for you and then give you my commentary as I always do and give you some real world and give you the how and the why, as I always say, the why is more important than the how for the most part, by the end of this video. And then down below, I wanna hear from you. Has things changed for you in the last couple of weeks? Maybe you didn't even realize it. Take a look at your app and see if there's any obstructions going on or if there's less obstructions than normal, all right? Anyways, if you enjoy the video, find any value in it, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. If you didn't like it, throw it a thumbs down, it's okay. YouTube likes both for some reason. Also, if you have not subscribed as of yet, consider doing so, and if you have, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this notification button here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna give back to the channel, Channel and say thank you. There's a little thanks button down here. Thanks YouTube for that button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I've put together about 530, 540 videos just for you. I'll put a link right here. Click on that. Not yet. Click on that when you're done watching this video. Check them out. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course, the why, as I always say. This channel's always been about the why and will continue to be about the why. And finally, if you wanna pick up some merch, we got some new merch over there at jchristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop. This is one of them. I have a hat too, somewhere around here. There's Megabit, gotta love Megabit. Look at the back, guys, look at the back. To commemorate IFT, X guys, IFT 10, the launch. We were there for the launch, but of course it was postponed, but that's okay. We will go for the next one or the following one. We'll get to one of them, but we were there and had a really great time. There's a lot of coverage that I'm going to be releasing in the next week or so. We were literally about a hundred yards away from the OLM, Mechazilla and the arms. <laughs> right there. It was absolutely crazy. Pad A, pad B, we saw it all. We even saw the hopper. That just brings me back to Lunar Lander back in the 80s. Anyways, I digress. Starlink's new tech kicks tree problems to the curb. Starlink users in rural areas know the pain. Trees or buildings mess with your dish's signal, leaving you with spotty internet. Some folks even resort to cutting down trees or jerry-rigging dishes to the top of long poles just to get clear shot of the sky. SpaceX dropped the fix a week ago or so called beam switching, and it's changing the game for everyone stuck in forest or urban jungles with trees or buildings blocking the sky. How does SpaceX Starlink get this to work? With over 8,000 satellites buzzing around, Starlink's network is a beast. Beam switching lets your dish hop between satellites in real time to dodge obstacles like tree cover or rooftops. It's quick, flipping connections multiple times a minute or in a tenth of a second for RVers and boaters. SpaceX says this keeps your internet up 99.9% .9 of the time, no matter what's in the way. That's a big deal for remote workers or streamers who can't afford dropouts. What's the word on the ground? Reddit's got Starlink fans weighing in. A user in North California said their connection went from dropping every few minutes last year to rock solid this summer. But it's not flawless. Some in super dense areas like the Redwoods still deal with lag. Rightfully so. It's the Redwoods. 
<laughs> SpaceX's app now shows a live obstruction map, so you can tweak your dish's spot to avoid major obstructions. Why is this an important update? Starlink's got over 2 million users in the U.S. alone, and a recent outage on July 24th pissed off a lot of them when a network upgrade went sideways. Some noticed faster speeds afterwards, though, suggesting SpaceX is leveling up. Absolutely so. They're also rolling out a shared dish program. Matter of fact, I think I'll do a video on that because that's pretty important. Anyways, and cellular service for IoT devices, making their network a lifeline for remote areas. Post on X mentioned smoother streaming and gaming since the upgrade, though a few users still gripe about setup hassles. The bottom line. This tech means no more chainsaws or sketchy ladder climbs to get online. As SpaceX keeps launching satellites and tweaking their system, Starlink's making good on its promise of fast internet anywhere. Check their app for placement tips and your cabin or RV might finally stream without a hiccup. Absolutely the case. So now, real world. Of course, this is an article, actually a few articles slammed together, other people's opinions and whatnot. I'll give you some real world because we just tested this. Now, we were just at Starbase just a couple of days ago. I was there with Shannon, an amazing supporter of the show, as well as his beautiful wife, Sandra. And we were hanging out for a few days. We we're waiting for the launch, but the launch didn't happen, obviously, because it was pushed back. I'll probably get into some of that in a future video. Nonetheless, we were there at the 19th floor overlooking Starbase, which was absolutely amazing. Take a look at some of my coverage. I'm going to put some of those videos up this week coming up. So watch for those. Anyways, we were on the balcony and we decided to do some testing. Now, I knew that Shannon and his wife drove in about 19 or 20 hours to get there and he had a Starlink Mini on the roof without any problems at all. The entire trip, 100% connectivity. So I said, you know what? Let's put it through the test. We're going to broadcast live with the Mini and we did. But what we also did before that is we did some testing to see how it works on the balcony. Now, this isn't in the wide open space we're on a balcony with a solid concrete roof or overhang overhead so we had this unit pointing north northeast all right I'll use my phone as an example so what I decided to do is let's see if this beam switching I call it beam forming this beam switching actually works all right so we had this pointing north northeast let's say like this and what I ended up doing was tilting it about 10 degrees at a time let it reacquire take a look at speed tests another 10 another 10 another 10 like this so on and so forth until i had it flat literally pointing straight up at the concrete so the only place it was able to get signal is coming in just north northeast that's it just the north side of the building that is all and it was still getting connection I'm like, what the heck? Years ago, this would not happen at all. It would be dead. It would say obstructed, 100%, done. I ended up then going another 5%, another 5%, till literally we're at about 10 or 15%, pointing the opposite direction. Meaning that it could only get a beam, a connection, coming in from the north, northeast, at an angle like this. It was able to do it, guys. Now, that would never have happened just a few weeks back. Absolutely never. There's no possible way. And most of you guys that have SpaceX Starlink could attest to that. So it is now working. So exactly how does this all work, Joe? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Now, the way I look at this, obviously I don't work for SpaceX, I have to speculate, but what I'm going to guess is as the satellites are coming by, it's taking SNR readings from each and every one of them. SNR stands for signal to noise ratio and determines which one has the highest SNR, the best. Basically, the best signal to noise. Now, how is this important? What this allows it to do is to determine which satellite it wants to connect with and then beam form or capture that one satellite as it's coming and then continuously check. They were saying all the way to like a tenth of a second continuously check the satellites and when a satellite gets out of signal range when the SNR gets less and less and less okay it picks up the next one that has the best signal the best SNR and then switches to that 
automatically, as always say. And the beauty of it is, is you don't have to do anything. It's already done it. It's software. It's built in. That's great, guys. That is great. So now if you are an RVer and you're on a campground somewhere and there's a ton of trees in this area, let's say, well, you could still go to that area as long as you have clear sky somewhere else because it is going to grab the best satellite in an area that it can see. Now, bear in mind, the dish can now see about 140 degrees. So instead of like just a small like swath of the sky, it can see 140 degrees of the sky. That's a lot. That is a big V coming in. So once again, if you take that V and I switch it around this way, it was still able to get some signal underneath that balcony. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Moving forward, tonight we're going to have the JC Live show, so if you want to hang out, definitely do so. About 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, visit. If you have a question, as always say, put that at Jay Christina in the comment or the chat area. It makes it easy for me to see. Definitely come hang out. If you have any questions about Starbase, Mechazilla, our trip there. Hopefully Shannon can be on with us. We will see. I know he's traveling right now. Maybe he will be. That would be cool. Um, if you have any questions, definitely put them out there then. Also, next week, like I said, expect to see more coverage from Starbase. We got some really great footage. There was a lot of fun times that we had there. And I will share a lot of those photos in the community page as well as in Instagram. And if you're not subscribed, like I said before, please do so. That'd be awesome. And share this channel and share the video with your community. Facebook, Reddit, wherever you frequent. That would be very helpful. Anyways, guys, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Now even easier with SpaceX Starlink. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.